In this video, I'm going to go over the bubble sort algorithm in C. So the bubble sort algorithm is one set of steps we can use to sort an array of elements in C. Let's say we have an array here containing the elements, say from zero to nine. If we wanted to sort this out, we could use bubble sort to help us with that. And the way it works is really pretty simple. Basically, if two elements are out of order that are next to each other, it swaps them. That's the heart of the algorithm right there. So say we wanted to sort this list in an ascending order from zero until nine. The way bubble sort would work is it would go through this array, comparing the element to the element next to it. And if they're out of order, it would swap them. So we're trying to order it from zero to nine. So the first thing it would do is it would look at seven and one. And it would say, these are out of order because one is less than seven. So it would swap them and it would put like one here and seven there. Then it would look at seven and three next. And it would say, these are out of order because three is less than seven. And it would swap them. It would swap three with seven. It would look like this. And then seven and nine, it wouldn't swap them because in this case here, nine is not less than seven. And this already is in an ascending order. And so it wouldn't swap them but it would keep going. It would look at these two elements, these two elements, and on and on. And what it would do is it would do the same number of passes through the array looking for swaps as there are elements in the array. And then by the end of it, it would end up being a sorted list. There's actually a Wikipedia animation of this that's actually pretty good. I'll just show you it here. You can just see, like it looks at six and five. It sees that, you know, they're out of order and it swaps them. And then it looks at six and three and same thing. It sees they're out of order and then it's going to swap them and it's going to look at six and one and you know, same thing, it's going to swap them. And then when it gets to six and eight here, it's not going to do a swap because six is already less than eight. And the way the algorithm works is it's going to go through the array again and again, looking for these swaps. And it's going to do it the same number of times as there are elements in the array total. And by the end of that, it turns out that the array is going to be sorted. So let's implement this now. I'm going to say that the length of the array is 10. And then I'm going to have two loops. The outer loop is going to control the number of passes through the array. The inner loop is going to be doing the passes themselves and swapping the elements. So I'm going to say that i is equal to zero up until i is less than length, i plus plus. So in other words, I'm making as many passes through the array as there are elements in the array. And then in the inner loop, I'm going to compare the elements to each other. So I'm going to say here for int j is equal to zero. J is less than, and here I'm going to say length minus one. And then I'll say j plus plus here. And the reason why I'm saying length minus one here is because this last element here, I'm not going to be comparing it to anything, right? Because for all the other elements here from like zero up until the length minus one, I'm going to want to compare that element to the element next to it. But in the case of this last element here, there is no next element. That's it, right? So that's why I'm kind of stopping one short because there's no sense in comparing this to anything. So we're going to say here, if a at j is greater than a at j plus one, we're going to say it's out of order. And here's where I'm going to do the swap. I'm going to say int temp is equal to a at j. Then a at j is equal to a at j plus one. And then a at j plus one is equal to temp. And what I'm doing here is I'm using this temporary variable here to store a at j. Maybe it's this one here, right? And then I overwrite a at j with a at j plus one. Maybe it's this element here and I store it there. And then at a at j plus one, maybe it's here. That's where I'm gonna store the value of a at j that I put into that temporary variable. And using a tempor temporary variable like this to swap data in an array is pretty typical just because you have to have somewhere to store a value before you overwrite it, right? Like we're gonna overwrite this value with the other value. So unless I store it somewhere temporarily, I can't actually take that other value and set it to this, right? Because I would have overridden it. So we typically use a temporary variable in situations like this to, to, to do a swap. So once we're done sorting it out, let's actually print it out. We'll say here for int i is equal to zero, i is less than length, i plus plus. 
and we'll print out the elements. We'll say printf a percent d is equal to percent d slash n, and we'll output i and a at i. And we, we expect to see it sorted now in an ascending order. So we'll do a compilation. We run it, and we get it sorted in an ascending order. Now, if I want it to be sorted in a descending order with the highest number first, all the way down to the lowest number, all I have to really do is just flip this. I could just say less than instead, and it's just going to sort it in the other order. So we just run it like that, and now we get you know nine down to zero. And that's the basics of the bubble sort algorithm. Now, there are some things we could do to optimize this a bit and maybe make it a bit more useful. So the first thing we'll do is we'll put it into a function. I'm going to make a function that's going to carry the sort. So that way I could maybe call this function in different parts of my code. So we'll say here, void bubble sort. It'll accept an array as an argument and the length of the array. And we'll provide a definition of the function down here. And I'm just going to copy and paste my code in there because I've basically worked out how to sort it already with these same variable names. So we'll copy and paste this code in there. And then we'll just call the function instead. So we'll say bubble sort. We'll pass it the array. We'll pass it the length of the array. And then this function will then carry out the sort for me. And it's just kind of useful to do it like this because then if I had multiple arrays, maybe in my main function, I could call bubble sort multiple times to just sort out those different arrays. So we can clear this. And actually, you know what I should do is I should put length back here because I do use length in this loop down here. And if I don't have it defined, we're going to get a compiler error because I use length there. I'm also going to pass length to the function here as an argument. So we'll just give this a compile and run it. And we get again that the array is sorted here. It's just that, you know, now we've got it in a function here. And what's useful about that is then I could call this function wherever I want with whatever array that I want and whatever length of that array, and it can be expected to sort the array. So I've kind of made it more general now. So there are two important optimizations we should talk about. And one of the things we want to do is make these loops do the least amount of work as possible. And right now they're basically doing the maximum amount of work that needs to be done, but it turns out we can minimize the amount of work they need to do, the amount of times that they need to iterate and the amount of elements they need to look at. So this inner loop here, it's basically looking at the elements from the first one all the way up to here, right? And even with this element, it's going to look at this element when it does the swap potentially. So it's going through basically all the elements initially. It's going to turn out that when we go to sort the array, that after the first pass through the array, this element here is guaranteed to be in sorted order. So let's try, let's, let's say we're sorting it from zero to nine, right? If we're sorting it from zero to nine, what's going to happen is nine is always going to be swapped downward because nine is the biggest element. And so when we do a comparison here and we say, well, is, you know, is zero less than nine? Yes, it is. So it's going to get swapped. And then nine would be here, right? And then we'd say, well, is two less than nine? Yes, it is. So it's going to be swapped. Is four less than nine? Yes, it is. So it's going to be swapped. And that's going to keep on happening because it's the biggest element. And it's going to end up here by the first pass through this array here. That's just what's going to happen. Now, what's interesting is that once we've kind of put the biggest element here, there's really no need to look at it again. Once we know through the, after the first pass of the array that the biggest element is there, there's no need to look at that one again. So what we can do is we can actually, with this inner loop, we can actually kind of go less and less through the array each time. Because after the first pass of the array, we know that this element here is in sorted order. After the second pass through the array, we're gonna know that this element here is in its final sorted order. After the third pass through the array, we're gonna know that this element here is in its sorted order. So basically, with every iteration, with every sort of um, use of this loop here, we're gonna know that one more element is in sorted order. So instead of going from you know zero until length minus one, we can go from zero until length minus one minus i, the amount of times that we've actually used this loop to pass through the elements of the array. So if I save this here, let's do a clear, do a recompilation, and we run it here, it's still going to sort the array just as it did before, 
even though I'm doing less passes through this through this array. Because what I'm doing here is I'm saying like, okay, we're passing through the array zero until length number of times. But because we know that this last element here is, is gonna be sorted after each pass through the array, we can just sort of progressively look at less and less elements through each pass through the array here. Now, another optimization we can do is that sometimes it may just happen that this array gets sorted without going through the array the same number of times as there are elements in the array in terms of our passes through the array. So in other words, sometimes it just may be the case that after two or three passes through the array, it just so happens that there are no more elements that need to be swapped. It's already in a sorted order. So we could keep on going through the array another seven times in terms of our passes through it, but they wouldn't be doing anything because the elements just happen to be in a sorted order already. If that's the case, it would be nice if we could just stop sorting. So we're actually gonna change the way we decide whether to keep going through the array or not in terms of our passes. I'm gonna include stdbool.h. This allows me to make bool type variables and I'm actually gonna to check to see if a swap took place. So if a swap did take place, that's gonna mean that the array is not yet in a sorted order because something had to be done to it. Something had to be switched around to put it into a sorted order. But if I get through my pass of the array and no swap took place, that means the array is sorted at that point because no elements were found out of place. And if that's the case, we can just stop attempting to sort the array more because we know it's sorted. So I'm gonna say here, do, and I'll say here, while now, and I'm gonna use that std bool library I included that allows me to make a bool type variable. And I'm gonna say here, bool swapped is equal to false. And I'm gonna start off every iteration of this loop here with the assumption that no swaps have taken place. If a swap does take place, I'm gonna set swapped equal to true. And then here, I'm gonna to continue to sort the array. I'm gonna to continue to make passes through the array so long as it is the case that a swap took place. Because if a swap takes place, that means that something was out of order and we don't know yet that the array is sorted. But if I set swap to false in this outer loop here, and then I make a pass through the array and no swaps take place, so no swaps take place, swap is never set to true, that means that the array must already be in a sorted order. And if that's the case, swapped is gonna be false after we go through this. And if that's the case, we don't wanna to continue to try to sort an array that's already sorted and we would stop. So what this technique allows me to do is potentially stop trying to sort the array earlier and do less work. So we'll actually have to do one more thing here. I'm using I here, but I actually kind of took out I when I, made, when I took out that outer loop there. So I'm gonna make an I, I'm gonna say int I is equal to zero. And down here, I'm gonna say I plus plus just so that way I keep track of this number of times we've already passed through the, the array because I'm using that to lessen the amount of array elements that I go through on each pass through the array when I do my potential swaps. So we'll save this here. We'll do a clear, give it, give it a recompile and run it. And we see that you know it again sorts the array here. But the difference is with these two optimizations here, with this optimization here, I'm doing less comparisons potentially. With this optimization here, I'm actually doing less passes through the array. And these two optimizations can actually speed up the performance of the algorithm. If I had an array with many, many, many elements, doing less passes through the array, doing less comparisons of elements in the array, that's gonna speed up the algorithm potentially. And that's a good thing, that's what we wanna do. Now I will say though, in general, bubble sort is not considered a great sorting algorithm. It's considered a good first one to learn because it's kind of easy to, easier to get into our heads than some of the other algorithms. It's easier to think about than some of the other algorithms, but there are much faster algorithms like quick sort, for example, that sort arrays in a much better way, in a smarter way that's faster, that has a better performance in general than bubble sort. And so I'll make other videos talking about those sorting algorithms down the line, but that's bubble sort in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.